In this uh, video clip, I'm going to have a look at the black 1976 model um, and uh, verify or um, look at also its relationship with the Black Scholes model 1973. So Black 76 emerged three years after Black Scholes, which came in 1973. And uh, the idea was to extend the Black Scholes framework take into account um, options to trade it on futures or forward contracts and uh, by the mid 1970s there was a lot of financial innovation already and a number of option type contracts uh, traded on futures um, and the Black Scholes model had originally been developed to look at options on the spot price uh, so this was an innovation at the same time, the same basic ideas in terms of geometric Brownian motion and so on were being applied and um, the same assumptions that applied to the Black Scholes model typically applied to the Black model. So the value of a call in terms of uh, the Black model, <coughs> not that much different. We have uh, the exponential, the negative interest rate by the time period. And then F and D1 and D1 <coughs> is similar to Black Scholes D1 and D2. And again, N uh, refers to the cumulative normal distribution. So, um, what I plan to do is look at an actual um, application of the Black model to interest rate caps. Right? And the interest rate cap is an interest rate, it's an option on an interest rate or sometimes uh, caplets. Um, so, okay, so we could ima <coughs> again uh, look at <coughs> the black model and um, uh, consider uh, the black model and its application to uh, interest rates and as a form of interest rate risk management. Um, Want something that is a little bit different with uh, the black model when applied to interest rate caps is that we have to take into account two different time periods. There's a time period when the payoff on the option position is worked out, and then there's the payoff. There is the time period that we attribute to the payoff. So there is typically a lag. Um, okay, so let's might be easy to look at a actual example. Um, Okay, so we could imagine um, cal calculate the value of a caplet that caps the interest rate on a ten ten thousand dollar loan at eight percent with quarterly compounding for three months starting in one year, and the zero curve is flat at 7% per annum with quarterly compounding the one year volatility is for the three month rate underlying the caplet is 20% and the continuously compounded zero rate for all maturities 6.9394 so we we could consider the following graph where we're trying to hedge the effect of an increase in interest rate. So obviously if you're um, borrowing money, the risk that arises relates to interest rates increasing. So in this instance the underlying here is an interest rate and we could imagine a situation where we are trying to hedge, we're, we're concerned that interest rates might go above 8% and we want protection against that. And for the immediate future, the term structure is flat at 7%. So, and that's quarterly compounding. So again, we might consider um, that, okay, currently interest rates are 7%, but we are concerned we're concerned that interest rates would exceed 8%. And maybe that's a particular 
rate that we find uh, would be unsustainable at some point in the future. So currently we're at 7%. Our fear is that interest rates in the future will go above 8 and we want to buy protection against rates increasing above 8%. Uh, we're also going to assume here that this that the term structure of interest rates so it's not just that the currently interest rates are seven percent it's also we're assuming here in this particular example that interest rates for the foreseeable future are going to remain at seven percent and um, uh, that's uh, a quarterly rate if we were to convert that into a continuously compounded rate we would use this relationship that the, if we know the quarterly or discrete rate, we can convert the quarterly or discrete rate into a continuous rate. So 7% quarterly is equivalent to 6.9395% uh, continuously. Okay, so that's something that we can have a look at um, uh, later on. But our our main interest here is we have we're going well we've got to perhaps think in terms of a timeline. So if currently the time period is zero, right? We're looking ahead to one year. So we're looking ahead to let's say this is one year, and we'll copy that and paste that, and we're saying we're looking to borrow money in one year's time so it's now uh, the money that we're hoping to borrow is at, for 10,000 is at this point here and the payback is three months later or quarter of a year later so when we're paying back the money, we're paying back the money at 1.25 years. And the current time period is back here at zero years. So this is where we currently are. We're looking ahead to one year. And we're going to borrow 10,000 for the period of three months starting in one year the whatever the rates of interest that apply here are what we're going to be charged at the end of the term so we're trying to buy protection against interest rates rising above eight percent at this point here and monies owing on that occur here so that's why we have a t1 and if you like a t2 here Okay, so if we're to set that out, then in terms of the uh, black model, okay, the black model we're configuring like this, there's going to be two time periods, a T1, one year, and a T2, right, when the payoffs occur. And we want to estimate the value of this hedging position, where volatility and so on can be specified so the volatility is 20 percent okay so if, if we were to take uh, if we were to apply the black model then we would use uh, e negative rt ignoring l and this delta here for a moment to apply the, the black model it could be written in terms of e negative r by t2 f the forward rate which is the seven percent quarterly and then RK is the capping rate, which is the 8%. And D1 is defined as F, the 7%, divided by the 8%, the capping rate, plus the black shoals or the volatility, squared T1, one year, divided by 2 over sigma, which is 20%, multiplied by the square root of T1, which the square root of 1 is just itself. And that would be negative zero five six seven seven, and then d two is equivalent to d one, negative sigma square root of, in this instance t one. 
So d2 is d1 minus sigma square root of t1, and that would yield negative 0 0.7677. And then to estimate the caplet, we take the principal involved, 10,000 multiplied by the difference between t2 and t1. So t2 is equal to 1.25 and t1 is equal to 1 so the difference between those two time between those two time periods is a quarter of a year and 0 0.9169 that's equivalent to taking the exponential so e to the power of the continuously compounded rate that we worked out in the previous slide this rate here by the longer time period when the payoff occurs and that's a uh, discounting factor down or present value factor 0 0.9169 so that goes here f n d1 minus r k the cap rate n negative d2 and this is uh, 5.162 so i've set this up in a spreadsheet I've specified an L, F, K, R, or you could think of this as R, K. It's just the uh, rate at which we cap. So maybe R, K, right, for this. I work out the continuously compounded rate extracted from the quarterly rate. T1 is 1 year, T2 1.25 years, sigma 0.2. What's d1? d1 is equivalent to what we have here. d2, so d1 minus sigma square root of t. And nd1 is norms dists, nd2 norms dists. And then the value ignoring l and that delta, the Black Scholes expressed as a prestige, sorry, the black model for the call expe expressed as in terms of these decimals is the 0 0.002064, so on. And then when I multiply, scale that by uh, 10,000 plus multiplied by the difference between 1.2 to 5 and 1. So when I take this value here is just this element here. It's just a percentage or a decimal. When we want to get the cash amount, we must must multiply by 10,000 and the 0 0.25. And that gives us the 5.162. Okay, now I've also written this function in terms of VBA. And um, so we have this black call, FKR, sigma T1 and T2. And I set up the formulas to be consistent with how it's written in the um, formula. Let's take that function. So I've copied that function. I've put it here. And let's copy, paste, equal, um, F is equal to um, 7%. The K cap rate is 8. The risk-free rate is, we're going to use the continuously compounded rate. Sigma is equal to 20%. And T1 is equal to 1 year, so it's the shorter time period when the payoffs are determined and T2 is when the payoffs occur. Okay, so we hit return. We get the same figures here, so we can see that the VBA function works. And the cash amount here involved, we just scaled it by 10,000 multiplied by 1.25 minus 1 by the cell here. So we get the percentage amount and cash amount for that black model. So that's an application of black 1976 to interest rate caps.